If you're curious, what is those two numbers that they're grading every baby on after birth? What are they and what do they mean? This is the video for you. I'm gonna be breaking down what is the APGAR score? What are the different things that they're grading baby for? And what does that mean for your baby? Hi, I'm Roxanne. I'm a labor and delivery nurse and student midwife, and I've been doing this for over 12 years and have been giving the APGAR score for many different babies. But what does it actually mean? So the APGAR is consistent of five different things that we're looking for, and they can get a grade of zero, one, or two is the maximum. Most babies, when we give their APGAR scores, are usually between an eight and a 10. 10 is like very rarely given, but these are the babies that come out and they're like, I'm great. They've transitioned to life outside of the womb really well. But what does the APGAR score even mean? So the APGAR score is a grade on zero to 10 where we grade babies on how well they're transitioning to life outside of the womb. This isn't necessarily a score of how well they're going to do long-term. It's really just in the moment, how well are they doing right now as they're transitioning to life outside of your belly? It can also be a grade of how well they're doing for if we're having to do resuscitative efforts, such as giving oxygen or doing chest compressions, how well is baby responding to those resuscitative efforts? Again, like I said, most babies are getting an eight, nine, or 10 for this APGAR, or even maybe a seven. If they're less than seven, we'll just continue to watch baby a little bit closer. But what are the five things that we're assessing for when we're looking for the APGAR? So APGAR is an acronym. It stands for appearance, pulse, grimace, activity, and respiratory. So the appearance is what is the color of baby? So if baby is has no pink, maybe is still blue, is zero. If they're pink everywhere, except for maybe their arms and legs or even their hands and feet, then they get a one. And then two is they are completely pink everywhere. Pink is a sign that they're being well perfused with oxygen and blood, and this is what we're wanting. Next is the pulse. So the pulse is obviously the heart rate. So if there is no heart rate, they get a zero. If they have a heart rate, but it's less than 100, they get one point. If they have a heart rate and it's greater than 100, then they get two points. The next one is grimace. So grimace is how is baby responding to external stimuli? So like if we're stimulating the baby, especially with that towel, are they crying? Are they like getting mad in their face? Are they responding to that stimulus? If they're not responding to anything, then that would be a zero. If there may be a little bit of a response, maybe like a light, light response, then that would be one. And if they're crying, pulling away from the stimulus, not really liking the stimulus, then they would get two. Next is activity. And this is related to their tone. What is their muscle tone? If they have no tone, they're just laying there limp, that would be zero. If they have some muscle tone, like a little bit of muscle tone, like they might fight a little bit, might move their arms a little bit, that would be a one. And if they're moving their arms, like fighting against us when we're trying to like drop their arms or like grab their arms, that would be good muscle tone. R is respiratory rate. So this is the respiratory effort that they're giving. If they have zero respiratory effort, they're not trying to breathe or they're not able to breathe, then that's zero. Usually we kind of relate this to crying. So if baby's not coming out and crying, it's usually a zero, unless we can see that they're like doing some sort of respiratory effort. If they're grimacing and like, maybe trying to breathe, grunting, singing, that would be a one. And if they're full on loud crying, we can see the chest expanding with the breath, then that would be a two. So you can kind of see how some babies aren't really, it's not very common for them to get a 10 because babies very commonly have what we call acrocyanosis, which is their hands and feet are blue. And this is just their blood circulation is still improving. They haven't had to do this while they're in the womb. So it's still trying to figure itself out. So it's really normal for their hands and feet to stay blue for a little while. And that's usually one of the most common reasons that they're not getting that 10. Another thing is their muscle tone. Their muscle tone might take a little bit to kind of come into place, especially if they maybe they're a little stunned when they come out after birth. So that's another really common place that people lose some points on the APGAR score. If you know what your baby's APGAR scores were after birth, let us know in the comments below. And that if there's any specific questions on labor, birth, pregnancy, postpartum that you're wanting to learn more on, let us know in the comments below and we'll be sure to make a video. If you enjoy this video and you want to learn more from us, subscribe to our channel so you can be notified whenever we release new videos. We try to release two to three educational videos and one fitness video a week. So please subscribe to our channel if you want to learn more.
And as a thank you for watching this entire episode, you can get 10% off any of the course that we offer. We have a childbirth education course where we break down the science of labor and birth if you're preparing for birth. And we also have a postpartum education course that breaks down what to expect for you and baby in that postpartum. Because while we do really prepare for pregnancy and birth, we also need to prepare somewhat for postpartum. And you can check out all of our courses at mamastayfit.com as well as any of our fitness programs. And again, use code YouTube10 to get 10% off.